blend what we found in a study of my first 100 patients that we did, for I should say first 100 eyes, is that we just had outstanding results. We had a continuous range of vision from distance, intermediate, and near. And I think the range of vision is actually one of my favorite parts of this month. Um, as you mentioned, really, the, from a quantitative perspective, the distance, intermediate, and reading is outstanding. Friends, uh, this is a brief review of the Technus ODCI unit, which you know uh, that this has been just launched. The latest PCL from uh, Johnson & Johnson. And if you remember, three years back, they had launched the Synergy IUL. And it seems that the Technus ODC is in development over the Technus uh, Synergy IUL. This is the IFU or DFU uh, that comes uh, as product insert in the box. And uh, what Technus ODC says is that this should work as a pupil independent but for pupil sizes over 2.5 millimeters. So if your patients have pupil sizes over 2.5 millimeters, then this lens should behave pupil independent. The other information that they provide over here is that the, your patient is expected to get 20 by 32, that is 0.3 logmar or better vision from 33 centimeters. That's a reading distance, 33 centimeters to infinite. How different is the Technus Odyssey from the Technus Synergy? As you know, the platform lens is the Synergy, but the difference with, between the Odyssey and the Synergy is in ring diameters and step heights. Therefore, because of this, uh, not any major uh, changes on the platform, the the J and J did not have to actually go through any clinical study to prove the efficacy of the ODC because they, that was actually the clinical studies of the Synergy already proved the uh, efficacy of the ODC. The, in the company website, uh, this is the first time I see that they have mentioned the central bullseye zone. This was not mentioned with the Synergy IUL, but with the ODC IUL, the central bullseye zone has been measured over here. So this area goes to the intermediate vision and why i say so is because if you remember and those of you who follow my website quickguide.org i had actually given an explanation about uh, you know the bullseye zone and where you could find how you could find where the light actually goes goes to so basically there is a relationship between the ad power and the light that you can dedicate it, dedicate uh, to the distance or to the near now so if you have a very high ad power and a very high bullseye zone, then chances are that that this uh, uh, that the light going through the bullseye zone is to the intermediate. If you have a very high ad power, but the diameter of the central zone is uh, less, and by less I mean less than one millimeter, chances are that this light is actually going to the distance. And this has been explained uh, in uh, some of my articles over, over here, uh, mainly the angle up, uh, kappa and the angle alpha. And you can actually type in over here, angle kappa, angle alpha, and you can go into that article. And you will also find uh, this uh, in this um, tool section over here, uh, you know, how to find out um, how, uh, the from the size of the bullseye and from the ad power that the lens provides, uh, whether that light is going to the near or the intermediate. Now, uh, if you uh, uh, now the one challenge with the Technus Synergy or the Technus ODC, both of these lenses, is that you know the company says that this lens is dedicated to a continuous range of vision. They don't tell you spell out what ad power is actually embedded in the lens. If you go into the Technus ODC, then you see as per the company, the uh, peak ad power is somewhere around. 2.5 diapters again 2 to 2.5 diapters but it seems that 2.5 is where you have the peak ad power on the spectacle plane now uh, again if you go into my website uh, you can actually calculate the ad power there is a relationship between the IUL plane ad power and the spectacle plane ad power if your spectacle plane ad power is around 2.5 diapters and uh, and considering that the patient has uh, a K reading of 44 diopters, that is an average K reading, average anterior chamber depth, and an average actual length, 
Uh, then the IUL play net power would be around 3.5 diopters. So my thought over here is that the Technus Synergy IUL will have an I power of close to around 3.5 diopters. Now let us also move into the discussion of what other changes you would have, what changes does this Technus uh, ODC lens have over the Technus uh, Synergy lens. And I believe that there may not be a huge amount of change um, but something that I could gather over here is this, uh, you know, the, uh, the step design over here. There is not a huge difference, but if you see the Technic Synergy steps, they are much more sharper over here, right? And uh, if you see the Technic ODC, the step is not sharp, you know, if it, it is not looking like a, you know, it, it is kind of rounded off, you know, and many different companies like the Panoptics Pro in my, um, you know, one of the videos I have did discuss about the Panoptics Pro and also the geometric lens, they all actually try to smoothen the lens as much as possible to reduce the forward scattering of light. Again, in some of my videos and some of my write-ups in quickguide.org, actually, I have given an explanation why we mean by uh, forward scattering of light. Now, the more there is a forward scattering of light, the more there is a stray light. And stray light means there is a veil of luminance. The light actually is, is actually spreading across the retina and that could lead to some amount of glare. So companies do try to avoid this glare um, that that arises out of stray light by actually rounding off the steps and that is a major change that I find between the Synergy and the ODC IUL and uh, also there is uh, one change that you would see also that you know after the central bullseye over here which I believe that the light actually is going to the intermediate um, the first step actually seems to be a higher height step and uh, the and the higher height step kind of you know should dedicate more light to the near but if you look into the synergy over here the first step was actually was a lower height step which i would believe that the light that would actually go through this uh, lower height step would dedicate more light to the intermediate so that is basically one difference that i find um, between the two lenses you know so far as the optics is concerned now the other thing that i would like to uh, draw your attention over here is that that, you know, um, they, if you look into the Technus uh, Synergy lens, not the ODC, the Synergy, the one that was launched three years back, you, if you see the distance over here, little error, a margin of error over here. So meaning that if your patient lands up with around 0.5 diopters it, the, uh, of myopia, hyperopia, the vision may drop at the distance, right? And the quality of vision may not be that great so far as the distance is concerned. But if you look into the Technus, um, you know, ODC lens of the, you know, the simulated one, you see a broader landing zone over here. And that may be a difference between uh, the two lenses, the uh, the new one, the ODC, and the older one, which was the Synergy. Odyssey lens by Johnson & Johnson Vision. Targs for refractive error is, is quickly becoming one of the more important aspects of intraocular lens implants. And this new full vision range IOL, the Odyssey, had a number of design elements in mind, one of which was the additional aspect of tolerance for refractive error. Well, why is that important? Because even with our best calculations, we can't entirely predict the effect of lens position. Uh, as you can see, the company also claims, uh, based on the research that they have done in their, uh, you know, uh, R and D setups, based on a 50 lines per millimeter and at five millimeter aperture, the Technus ODC might give a better, um, better uh, contrast uh, when compared to the Clarion monofocal IUL. Well, that is very promising, and um, only um, you know the clinical experience from surgeons. Uh, uh, experiences from the patients uh, will actually tell us how promising the Technus ODC is going to be. Now this is uh, definitely important because if you look into one of the studies over here, comparison of the optical behavior of five different multifocal diffractive intraocular lenses in a model eye, the synergy actually, uh, if you see the pupil diameters over here, the blue is the two millimeter pupil and uh, you know, 
the MTF value seems to decrease as a function of the aperture from 2 millimeters to 3 millimeters as you go to 4.5 millimeters the MTF for the distance seems to be dropping with the synergy and if this study if we have to go by this study probably um, this is definitely a welcome um, you know change with the ODC uh, if the contrast is better I mean you know in clinical conditions if the contrast is better with the ODC uh, especially in low light conditions well searching the internet for the first clinical results with the technus odyssey i came across this paper um, uh, by alex hakopian who presented this paper in the american society of cataract and refractive surgery and according to this paper 90 percent of the patients implanted with the lens reported an excellent or very good vision and some experiences of halos and glares were actually there but few of them actually complained that it was bothersome. Um, if you go a little deeper, 11% of the patients, uh, only 11% of the patients actually said that the glare at night was extremely bothersome. 0% of the patients actually experiences halos here and 5% uh, of the patients actually ex experience rings, right? So approximately 85% uh, part of participants reported needing glasses not at all or a little of the time, while 90% rated overall vision as excellent. These are very initial, uh, you know, the clinical experiences that are coming out. And I am sure that in future we will be having more studies on the technical experience.